What is it like to charge a Chevy Bolt EV at a Tesla supercharger with its magic dock? We're here at a Lowe's Home Improvement Center off of East Chase Parkway and Interstate 30 on the east side of Fort Worth. Now, if you're not familiar with the Met Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, this is almost to Arlington, Texas. Uh, so we're in the middle of a large metropolitan area. And right over here is a Tesla supercharger this is the first one in Texas that has Magic Dock adapters. The Magic Dock adapter is a CCS adapter that allows any EV equipped with a CCS DC fast charging uh, plug to charge at a Tesla supercharger. You activate these chargers through the Tesla app and we're gonna show you what that process is like and do a 10 minute charging test on these superchargers. First, a little bit of background on this. Uh, Tesla superchargers are everywhere. There are, they're in remote places, big cities, make road tripping with a Tesla super easy. Uh, and at the beginning of 2023, Tesla announced uh, the Magic Dock connector, which is right in here, that is a CCS adapter that allows this Tesla cord to connect to my non-Tesla car. It was announced early last week that this supercharger here in Fort Worth, Texas was going to have those magic docks. This is the first Tesla supercharger with magic dock connectors in the state of Texas. To my knowledge, it's the only one that's not in California or New York right now. And yes, GM and Ford and Rivian and other car manufacturers are signed agreements with Tesla to be able to charge and get adapters and all of that stuff but this will charge any CCS car. So a couple of days later on August 2nd, 2023, this supercharger came back online with the Magic Docs. 29 hours after the first check-in from a Polestar 2, which was the first CCS car to check in on plug share here, 29 hours later, all of these units went offline. Every single one of them went offline. And I, I have no evidence whether or not they were still able to charge Teslas with just the NACS plug, but the CCS cars, none of them could get the stations to activate. It showed me on the Tesla app that all of these units were in use. That's what it showed me. Plug share, the ratings dropped to 2.4 stars. Um, it was offline for four days. It came back online yesterday, which was August 9th. Uh, no, it came back online August 8th. I came out here yesterday, did a test, shot a video. The audio was terrible, so I'm coming back out here today to reshoot it. Um, so that's just a little bit of background on these. And with these going offline, it brings into question about reliability. Is it the CCS plug that's, that caused the problem? Or is it the fact that we're in like the 17th or 18th day of high temperatures of 107 degrees Fahrenheit here in North Texas uh, and low temperatures getting down to the mid 80s Fahrenheit. It's been really hot lately and it's really hot right now. Uh, the next issue is, let me show you back here, driver's side tail light on a Tesla Model 3, Model Y, I think in an X and an S, I know for sure on a 3 or Y. The charge port is right here under the tail light on the driver's side. So a Tesla is gonna back in until their rear wheels hit this curb down here. It's gonna back into this spot and use this charger that will take this plug and hit it right there. So you can see how short the cable is. It doesn't touch the ground on that distance or anything. Well, if I'm in this spot, I'm using this charger. In this spot where, I'm, where I parked my car, if it was a Tesla, I'd use this one. But, oh, and this one, the magic dot came out. There's no way I'm getting this to my charge port, okay? So I would have to try this one and I can, I'm not getting it to my charge port. I can't get a good angle. So a Chevy Bolt is not gonna be able to use these at all. We're gonna have to use the one on the end. So the, the ones that are here in the normal line, and the Model Y driver just told me what I'm telling you now, uh, 
is we're gonna have to pull over to the one on the end. So I'm gonna reposition and get the car into the correct charger to one that we can actually uh, connect to and do the charge test. So now that I'm at the right uh, charging pedestal, with this one here on the end, I can get to my charge port easily. On the app, which I'll show you right here, uh, I've got, you tap on charge by non-Tesla, tap the station, which is gonna show up as that red little indicator. And if I say charge here, it loads the screen and it gives me the option to show how to charge, which says find the pedestal number. This one is 1A. Uh, do, don't park sideways to block, you know, if you park sideways, I could block a couple of Teslas from being able to charge. That would be a bad move. Uh, select the post number, and then it gives me this animation of what I need to do. In theory, if I pull the, just pull on the cable, the NACS plug comes out and I can plug in. If this was a Tesla, that's all I'd have to do is pull this out, plug it in. But with this vehicle, uh, let me close the how-to. I have to select pedestal 1A, unlock the adapter on the app, let that load, and then come around here. I have to push up, and then it comes out with the Magic Dock adapter. And that's the magic part of the Magic Dock. So I flip my thing down, plug it in, and now we just wait for the handshake to happen. Full disclosure, I was out here yesterday and did a test, and on the first time that I attempted what I just did, it did not connect. It tried and it worked for two minutes to try to make the connection, and it didn't work. Second time it did, this time I just got the beep from my car, so we are now charging. I'm gonna start my 10 minute timer, so we're on the clock. Let's do a quick check in on our stats right now. We're at 39.61% state of charge on the battery. We are getting around 40 kilowatts from the charger, but that's because I have the air conditioning on in the car. We're probably having a lot more power delivered. Uh, battery temps at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and the ambient air temperature is 113 because the temperature sensor is under the windshield. Um, so it's, it's warm. Uh, right now. Uh, we'll check back in here in a couple of minutes and see where we're at at uh, 5 and 10. So when you're at a, ch at a at any kind of DC fast charger, you're going to run into other EV owners and we're going to run into Tesla owners here at a supercharger and you are? Jared. Jared. Hi. So Jared, Jared, what were you telling me about this supercharger station the, uh, just a couple of minutes ago? So uh, I, I, came, I came in, I came in uh, and I, I saw some, uh, some, ser some service guys working on a charger and uh, he, he, was, he was really um, really not, not very uh, s like specific on what he was doing, but he points and then he points and I knew from just experience, that that he installed that they were installing magic docks to charge all all EVs. So, and you said from experience, you've seen him doing that before. Uh, yeah, I, I I've been 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 here a couple times. Okay, a couple times when when the, when those guys were here. And then you tweeted about it. Yeah, I, I tweeted <laughs> about it, and it blew up. It blew up in like hours. And Electrek picked it up. Electrek picked it up. Uh, uh, Tesserati picked it up. All, all the, all the big guys picked it up. And that, that article from Electrek is how I knew that this was here, and I could plug my car into oh, it. And man. that's all thanks to your yeah, tweet. That, that's sweet. That's pretty <laughs> sweet. Uh, to, to, totally, unintended. Got you. Gotta love it. That's yeah. this is what you happens. Gotta, gotta love the sometimes internet. Sometimes when you're at a uh, at a at a DC fast charger. Let me show. Yeah. Can we show you yeah. some stuff on your yeah. car? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go for it. So. This is how you're supposed to use a supercharger with a Tesla. So the, they're, they're designed with the cable length and everything to back in and the charge port's right here at the back corner of the car. And you see how easy that is for this to connect. And all you had to do when you got here was get out of your car, grab the plug, plug. tap it, tap right there and this thing pops up on its own, right? Am I getting, well, tell well, me if I'm getting anything wrong. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> if I say something incorrect about a Tesla on my channel, I get burned real bad. <laughs> um, so you, you plug it in, yeah. and then you just, it just walk starts. away. It, it just starts, starts automatically. So starts automatically. Only only charging uh, network that I can do that with on my Bolt is EVgo. 
Oh, okay. That, the EV goes. We'll yeah. do plug and charge on my car. Yeah. Uh, they won't do it on our Fiat. Um, our Fiat can't fast charge anyway, but oh. <laughs> EVgo only lets yeah. me have one vehicle that can do it. So if I oh take my, my live wire to an EVgo, I have to activate through the app and all that. Oh, stuff. wow. But yeah, plug and charge is a great thing. And yeah. uh, so it, that's all you do. Yeah. You back up, plug in, and you go, as opposed to all of the steps that I had to go through. Really smooth, really, really smooth. We are almost at the end of our 10 minutes. We blew past our, our five minute check-in while we were talking with Jared. <laughs> um, and, but great guy, great to talk with, and was kind of really connected to this particular charging station. There's my timer. So we're at the end of 10 minutes. I'm gonna go back into the Tesla app and it is saying it's sending me 36 kilowatts right now. My car is receiving 31.4, but that's, uh, that's a net. Um, probably having three or four kilowatts going into the AC system right now, just to keep the car cool. Uh, I'm going to, on the app, I'm going to tap stop charging and got my green check mark. So that means I can unplug. I need to push this silver circle here and that releases the latch in front of it and the magic dot connector just comes out. Put it back in, good to go. This is reset and ready for the next Bolt, Polestar, ID4, Ionic 5, EV6, whatever to pull up and start charging. Let's get a final report on, uh, on car scanner. We got up to 49.02% state of charge. Um, I'm reading 5.5 kilowatts being used right now to keep the car cool. Battery temp went up a couple of degrees to 100.4 Fahrenheit and external uh, ambient air temperatures 114.8. And there went Jared, bye. He said he was gonna be here for a half an hour and we were only here for 10 minutes. But anyway, um, so that's the experience of using Magic Dock. Uh, and just to give you an idea, real temperature so that we don't, we're not just going skewed off of the greenhouse reading in here. The closest uh, weather station in Weatherbug says it's 105 degrees right now, feels like 111. So that's how hot it is. If I'm shiny, it's, it's hot, it's sweaty. But that's the experience. This time around, it was absolutely seamless. The biggest issue that I have and that other EV owners are going to have is, let me just look, this, there's 16 stations at this, uh, at this supercharger station and 15 of them are lined up like this so that they're perfectly set up for Teslas to back in, plug and charge and be good to go. They've got these curbs here to keep people from driving into the charging pedestals. But with my car, a Chevy Bolt, based on where my charge port is, this is the only one I can use because it's the only one with a cable long enough. That's gonna be true on a, on a Mustang Mach-E. That's going to be true on a, uh, an F-150 Lightning. Uh, a Kia Niro EV can go in straight front because its charge port is right here on the nose. Same with a Hyundai Kona. Hyundai Ionic 5, Kia EV6, their charge ports are right at the very back of the car, but they're on the right side instead of the left. So they may have issues or they may have to park in parking spaces that aren't gonna work for another Tesla to pull in. We'll see how that goes and whether that's gonna get people mad or not. But it's a great charging experience. They need to have these out in the country, uh, like Henrietta, Texas, Childress, Texas, Clayton, New Mexico, open up that non-interstate route between here and Denver that right now a CCS car just can't do, unless it's like a lucid air with a full 500 mile charge when it leaves Fort Worth. I don't know what the last thing I said was, we're having heat issues with the camera, uh, but if I was to take this car to, to, Oklahoma, uh, to Colorado, to Denver, I'd have to go into Oklahoma, go into almost Albuquerque, like Santa Rosa, and then I could go up uh, through uh, New Mexico on Interstate 25, take a long way. But anyway, that's where these need to be. These need to be on those non-interstates where the CCS charging deserts are. Thanks for watching. Um, hopefully I got the end of it as the camera was overheating. I have some uh, new video coming out, including the one year anniversary review of the Bolt. See you on the next one.